Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Oh, I love that nice, solid return, even on a cold, blowing morning like this. It is great to have you here. Um, a, a few announcements. If you guys don't remember, this is the uh, harvest dinner immediately following the service. If you didn't come prepared, don't worry, we did. Come join us and, and everything will be just fine. Um, Wednesday evening study, it's at 7. We are getting ready to enter the 11th chapter of Romans. And the Wednesday before Thanksgiving, we never do have study. Okay, so the 24th, there won't be study. We did begin choir practice again. Do you want to tell us about it? We are beginning choir practice again. We are gonna do a Christmas cantata. Um, so anyone who feels comfortable and wants to join us on Wednesday nights from 6 to 6.59, we will be in here uh, practicing. We only have a four practices left, I believe. So come join us now. We've got plenty of music and CDs where you can rehearse at home on your own. So thanks and come join us. <laughs> We've got the auction things out in the connector, okay? We are not doing the in-person auction. We're doing a silent auction, or some of the items out there are just, they're marked, you know, make such a donation as, as a recommended donation for a, an item, and we're doing our best to raise that money for Veterans and Athletes United. Remember, 100% of that money makes it to the cause. Not a bit of it stops here at the church. Not a bit of it stops in the administration of Veterans and Athletes United. It all makes it to the cause. That's why we chose that group, okay? <laughs> all that out there needs to go away by the end of next Sunday because the, uh, the village will be set up and that takes quite a lot of time. Okay, so... All right, next Sunday is the last Sunday for those tables to be there. It'll be changing over to the uh, Christmas Village. And if you haven't seen that, well, I tell you what, Denise is still setting it up, Scott. I'm not voting for that. <laughs> I'm saying that if, uh, if somebody were to call Denise and say, I've got an hour or two I can help you, that would probably be well received, okay? Updates for the directory. Please get them in just as quickly as you can. Um, do, 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 do. Prayer Pal Christmas dinner will be on the 4th of next month. And what, what movie are we watching next month? Do you remember? Okay. Second Tuesday of each month, we're still, Dolly and I, watch a movie on the big screen in here, and we invite you to swing by and watch it with us. Uh, we'll supply the popcorn, the church will supply some lemonade, some iced tea, other than that, if you want a snack, you bring it, and we have a good time watching nice Christian movies, okay? Any other announcements that I might, might have missed? Okay. As far as visitors, Louise, do you want to introduce Matt, or do you just want me to call him out? We're glad you're here with us. We're sorry that you're in town for the, the medical causes, but thank God they've got the medical technology to help. Glad to have you here. Okay. Welcome. <laughs> any other announcements? Not seeing any. Larry, I think, has a short one for us. Yeah, Shirley, I'd like for you to come forward, if you would, please. The 
The next thing on the list, I believe, is birthdays and anniversaries. Do we have any birthdays this week? Not seeing any. Do we have any anniversaries this week? Well, then let's take a look at the prayer requests. What? Yeah. I lost it and needed to come up with some new ones. Okay, there were several things that were added to the prayer request list. Um, Don King is home doing well. Uh, Marilyn is still working with, I, we don't know what the issue is with her head position. Uh, Ron Kellen burned his eyes with a UV light. Um, you've already met Louise Marshall's brother, and they were added to the prayer request list because they're down here for some seizure issues of... It's your wife, right, Matt? Okay. And her name is Terry. Okay. Um... I see some other here, but I'll be honest with you, I can't even read my own writing. Linda Wilson fell, and it's my understanding that she beat herself up pretty bad, but uh, a praise buried in the middle of in injury is no broken bones, no stitches. Okay, So keep her in your prayers, if you will. And that does not mean that the other items on the prayer request list are of any less importance. I, for one, can tell you that the prayers are heartily felt. The cards are definitely appreciated. They always seem to arrive at just exactly the right moment. The day that you think the pain is going to get on top of you is the day that you walk out and there's three cards in the mailbox. It really, really helps. And I don't think that's coincidence unless you spell coincidence the way I do, G-O-D. Okay, so keep praying, keep sending the cards, keep giving the calls, they all work. And now, if you'll join me in a moment of silent prayer and the ringing of the bell. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. For our praise hymn this morning, we're going to sing page 130, Here I Am to Worship. It's a little different, so I'm going to explain a little bit. We're just going to sing the first two verses, and then um, we'll, we'll sing it all the way through to the chorus, and then go back and sing the second verse. And then um, 
After we're done with the second verse, we're going to sing the um, second page, and we're not going to, where it says repeat twice, we're not going to repeat it, and we're just going to sing it, and then you come all the way back to the chorus and sing that, and then we're done. So I guess just follow us. <laughs> it's a little confusing. So let's stand as we sing this, please. So we are here to worship. for today is from the sixth chapter of Galatians, the first five verses. Brothers, if someone is caught in a sin, you who are spiritual should restore him gently. But watch yourself, or you also may be tempted. Carry each other's burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. If anyone thinks he is something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. Each one should test his own actions. Then he can take pride in himself without comparing himself to somebody else. For each one should carry his own load. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. For our prayer hymn, please turn to page 338. Wonderful words of life. We're going to sing all three verses standing on the third, please. Page 338. Thank you. 
Father, we've gathered this morning to hear those wonderful words of life, to pull them into our heart, to make them part of ourselves, to replace everything in our life, everything in our being that is not of you. We want those wonderful words to make us whole. We ask, if you will, to then encourage us to share those, to bring others to find the meaning and the joy that's within those wonderful words of life. So be with us, Lord, as we hear a message, as we hear your words, and then embolden us to be about your business, to show you just how much we love you. In Christ's name, amen. For our communion hymn, please turn to page 560, Oh, how I love Jesus. We're going to sing all four verses standing on the fourth, page 560. Because he first loved 
Our Heavenly Father, we're so thankful to be here to worship you, and we thank you for this opportunity to be before this table in your name. Lord, we remember you as the pain and the suffering that you endured for the sacrifice of our sins and for the promise of an eternal life. Lord, we thank you for these things, and we now we just ask that you bless this loaf that represents that body that went to that cross, and we just ask that you be with us this coming week. Strengthen us, guide us, and direct us through the challenges. And we just give you all the praise and all the glory. Our Heavenly Father, we continue to thank you and praise your name for your plan of reconciliation. We know that your love for us made it possible for us to be with you as you sent your only Son to die upon that cross so that our sins might be forgiven. And so, Lord, we're so grateful for the love and the grace and the mercy that made that possible. We're so grateful for Christ giving up his place on high to take upon himself the sins of the world. So just now, Lord, we ask for forgiveness in all the ways we've let you down throughout this week. And we ask a blessing on this cup as it reminds us of the blood that Jesus shed for us on the cross. And we ask all these things in his name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Join me in a prayer for the offering. Father, we give you thanks for all the blessings that you have given to us, so many that we can't even begin to fathom your love for us. But we want to give back to you. And so we do in the form of tithes, offering, gifts, our times, our talents, so many things that we can do for you. And we just ask, Lord, that you'll accept all of these and help us to use them for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. How many of you have seen the Buick advertisement of the car that parks itself? Or how about the GMC advertisement where you put it on cruise control and you clap, clap, play, play, you know, and it does everything for yourself. Okay? Well, there's a car manufacturer who said, you know, we're tired of human error. We're going to develop a car that is completely computerized. It is absolutely perfect and will eliminate all those problems. So a man bought the car. 
He pushed the start button and on came the announcement. You have purchased a perfect car. It is automated, computerized, and nothing can go wrong, go wrong, go wrong, go wrong. <laughs> Life as you and I have found it, things go wrong. There is no perfect life. We have difficulties, and the Bible calls them burdens. And so this morning we're going to talk about bearing burdens, or burden bearing. And how do we take care of that? How do we deal with these problems that come on that go wrong, go wrong, go wrong? See, one of the realizations that most of us have is bad things happen to Christian people. You need to realize something. You know, Satan is alive and well. And he really doesn't pay any attention to the non-Christian because they're going to hell on their own. They, they don't need any help. But the moment you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you're going to find that life becomes somewhat more difficult. Because he's going to continually put some kind of blocks in your way, some kind of, of difficulty that will cause you to question, to wonder. To think, to you know, question your faith and your belief. It is normal. Life is difficult at the very best. A young man came in and told his mother, he said, Mom, I've decided to become a political science major in college because I want to clean up the mess of the world. And she said, Honey, that's a good idea. Why don't you start upstairs with your room? The world is a mess, and some of our rooms are a mess. I was talking to a young man not too long ago. He said, I've got a 16-year-old and a 14-year-old, and I cannot get them to clean up their rooms. So he said, I've made a rule in the house. They have to close the door all the time, keep the door closed all the time. And I started thinking about that. The mother said, I want you to start cleaning up the mess of the world by cleaning up your own. The dad is telling his boys, I want you to hide your mess by closing your door. Now, I don't want the rest of you, but I don't think we're going to get very far when we just hide our mess, hide our problems, hide our difficulties. We need to deal with them. And the question is, how are we going to deal with them? And, and today I want to talk to us about three different aspects of dealing with our burdens. You know, one of the things, and I, I've said this so many times, but, you know, when, when you are a teacher or when you're a principal, you'd be amazed the things that kids come in and tell you. I mean, just amazing. And so I really, I never did it, but I always wanted to send home a note saying, if you don't believe everything your child said we did at school, I won't believe everything they say you did at home. Life is a mess sometimes. It's difficult. 1963, Fishers High School had a very good basketball team. When the season was over, the whole community couldn't wait for the 1964 season because you see, all five starters were juniors. Those five kids had played basketball together since they were in fifth grade. They were tight. They were like brothers. And one weekend, they decided to go out. One of them, Jim Routabush, got in trouble with his mom. And mother said, you can't go. Jim was devastated. The other four went on without him. And that night, they had a crash. And all four of those boys were killed. Jim Routabush became one of my teachers. I married he and his wife. He became my assistant principal. I know him well. I love him much. But I can tell you there's never a day in his life that he didn't feel guilty that he was not in that car. There was never a day in his life he did not miss those four boys. It haunted him and still does to this day. Life is difficult at the best. 
This little town of 250 were crushed with four of their young heroes. All went to meet the Lord. Life is difficult. The old preacher Billy Sunday said, I know Satan is alive and well for two reasons. One, the Bible says so, and two, I've done business with him. Now, I don't know about the rest of you, but most of us have done business with him at one time or another. Sometimes it was monkey business, but we've done business with him. We know he's alive, and we know he's well. We have to remember the story of Job. You know, God loves his children, but God also permits his children to be tested. Now, God said, I will never test you. I will never tempt you. I will never lead you astray. But that doesn't mean that God doesn't open the door and let other things come in to see exactly how strong our faith is. Because sometimes we're not just proving it to God. We have to prove to ourselves how strong our faith is. As long as we believe that we believe, we'll be okay. But when we start not believing that we believe, we start having problems. Life is difficult. Some people are dealing with rotten or broken marriages. They're having problems with their children. Some people are dealing with abusive and painful parents. Some of us have bad working conditions or financial hardships or poor or failing health. Some people are are just absolutely overcome with boredom or depression or loneliness or loss of a loved one. And the list goes on and on and on. These are things, real life things that we deal with every day because life is difficult. But I'm also going to tell you that there are solutions to the problems. When you are burden bearing, you need to have three aspects of life. Number one, you need to look inside and see what's inside you. Number two, you need to look outside and find support. And number three, you better look above. And it's a team effort. It has to be a team effort. It can't be just one or the other. Galatians 6, 5 says, For each of us should carry his own load. King James says, For every man shall bear his own burdens. You see, when when burdens come along, we have to deal with them. We can't just sit on the front porch in a rocking chair and say, God, take care of it. It's a team effort. And you and I have to be a major part of that team. We have to look into ourselves. We have to go down deep inside here and find out how strong we are. I read about a a man going through a grocery store and he had a kid in there and he's getting these groceries and the kid screaming and yelling and throwing a tantrum. And a lady is walking behind him and she hears the man say, now keep your cool, George. Don't get excited, George. Don't yell, George. Don't make a fool of yourself, George. And the lady said, oh, sir, I am so proud of the way you're talking to your screaming son. And he said, lady, I'm George. (laughs) See, sometimes we have to talk to ourselves to keep our cool, to keep calm, to, to handle the situation. We can't always expect someone else to do it for us. Life is difficult. There are burdens that have to be borne. And we have to start by bearing them ourselves. I don't don't like all commercials, of course, but there was a Nike commercial that I liked. It's been several years old now. It was about a lady named Priscilla Welch. She was a 42-year-old English lady who had just won the New York Marathon. And she went on with a Nike commercial. And she's jogging up this hill, very steep hill. And she said, three years ago, I couldn't even walk up this hill. She said, I smoked too much. I drank too much. I was overweight. I was miserable. And she said, I bought a pair of jogging shoes and started jogging. And three years later, she wins the New York Marathon. And one of the taglines of Nike, and it just said, just do it. Now, I don't always like that tagline, 
But when I take it, the idea when it's saying to you, when you have a difficult time, then you just deal with it. You do it. You can't just put it off on someone else. Lou Gehrig was the first baseman for the New York Yankees for 15 years. He played 2,130 consecutive games, never, ever missed a game. When he retired, they, they took x-rays of his hands. Every finger on both hands had been broken multiple times, and yet he never missed a game. He's standing in Yankee Stadium. He has ALS, which is now called the Lou Gehrig disease. He is dying, and he stands there and says, I am the luckiest man on the face of the earth. He took his own burden and handled it well. Sometimes we just have to do that on our own. <laughs> I'll get in trouble on this one. When Tina graduated from college, she got a job teaching in a school where I was in the same corporation. And her principal had a policy. The policy was, I'd rather you crawl in sick than call in sick. We had to get our own subs back then. And he didn't want to get subs. So she called me, rookie teacher first, you know, she said, Dad, I've had, a, I don't know, 102 fever. I've been vomiting all night. I've got a headache. I called him and he said, Tina, can you come on in? And she said, what should I do? I said, honey, do what he said. You get dressed, you go in, go to his office, and you vomit all over his desk. <laughs> didn't I? She didn't listen. She didn't listen to Dad. She was a good, she took her own burden. Didn't listen to the bad advice her father was giving her. You see, one of the reasons that you can take your own burden is because Psalm 139.14 says, I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. We can take our own burden because we're made in the image of God. And when you're made in the image of God, you have resources inside yourself that you didn't even know you had. There are times you just have to gut it up and take it on. But I said we're a part of a team. And when you have taken it on yourself, you also know that's the time to also share it with your friends and your family, especially your church family. You see, because I said, the second thing is you need to get help from without. Galatians 6, 2, King James Version says, bear one another's burdens, so therefore you fulfill the law of Christ. Paul is saying, bear your own burdens, but he's also saying, bear one another burden. Share your needs with each other. And then be there for each other when the need is shared Many years ago, a preacher named Henry Walt Beecher he went, went to his pulpit and he found a piece of paper on there that just said in big letters, fool. Well, he read it to the congregation. And he said, you know, I have seen letters where people wrote the letter and forgot to sign their name. This is the first time I ever saw somebody sign their name and forget to write the letter. We've got to reach out as a team. He shared with his congregation. Somebody out there thinks I'm a fool, but we're together. We're a team. And we're going to act as a team. We're going to be there as a team. And you know, and one of the things that I, I read about, and I, I dearly loved when I read it, and I'm sorry Linda Wilson's not here because I, I, I'd share it with her big time. I read where every human being needs four hugs a day just to maintain. Four hugs a day. Now I say that because Linda and I both know that we both need hugs and we talk about it, which uh, the fact that we need hugging each other. 
But this is a hugging group, and we need to be a hugging group. And that's a part of it. And the interesting thing was that I found that hugging heals a lot of disabilities. It said that hugging heals a lot of depression. Hugging heals a lot of anxiety. Hugging even helps you sleep better. I read a poem a long time ago, and I, I w should have researched it for today, but it said, I want to be a, a hug-a-war rather than a tug-a-war. And that's what important. So we need to learn how to get help from each other. That's what we're here for. That's why we're a family. And what we need to also understand is we need to get help from above. Help from above. Once we've tried to do it ourselves and once we've included the family, we also need to reach up and ask Jesus, Lord, help me. I need it. I absolutely, positively need everything you've got for me. See, Matthew 6, 7 says, Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. And Galatians 6, 2 says, Bear one another's burdens, so therefore the law of Christ will be fulfilled. And 1 Thessalonians 5, 14 says, Therefore we exhort you, brethren, admonish the idle, encourage the faint-hearted, help the weak, and be patient with them all. Did you hear that? I know it went a little fast. It says, encourage, help, and be patient. That's what we need for each other. Encourage each other. Help each other and be patient with each other. And then we come together as a family and say, Lord, we need you on this team. We need you to guide and direct and, and help us as we try to bear each other's burdens. For Psalms 55, 22 says, cast your burdens on the Lord and he will sustain you. How many times do we do that? How many times do we just keep it in ourselves or maybe even just share it with our friends, but not share it with the Lord? Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 says, Jesus said, come unto me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Who doesn't need that? Who doesn't need that peace that passes all understanding? That rest we get only from Christ. 1 Peter 5, 7 says, Cast all your cares on Him because He cares for you. He loves you. He doesn't want you to bear that burden alone. Abraham Lincoln said, I have been driven many times to my knees by overwhelming conviction that I have no place else to go. How many of us wait till there's no place else to go to call upon his name instead of calling upon his name early on? Many of you know I had a best friend for 50 years. His name was Ron. And Ron was single. And Ron was a man of habit. And there was a time in which he ate in the same restaurant every day. He'd go in with his book and sit down and read. And if I ever needed him at lunchtime or dinner time, I knew where to find him. Same place all the time. And he told me one time, he said, you know, and I asked him, why do you go to the same place? Why not some variety? He said, I go there because I get the greatest service in the world. I stopped and thought about that for a minute, you know? If a person comes in and is a customer every day and every day and every day, wouldn't you give him a little better service? And then I start thinking, what about the Lord? If you come to him every day and every day and every day in prayer, do you think maybe he's going to hear you a little bit more than the person who only comes in desperation? The person only comes when I need him. If they took better care of Ron because he came in every day and every day and every day, I question if God doesn't take care of us better when we come to him every day and every day and every day. Because when we come to him every day, we're not coming to him in desperation, we're coming to him in praise. And we're coming to him in glorifying his name. We're coming to him and thanking him for all the good things. It's not just the 
father I need is the father I love. 1 Peter 3.12 says, For the eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and his ears are attentive to their prayers. I'm encouraging you to be in prayer with God every day. A little girl said, you know, I go to church every Sunday because when they carry me in the last time, I don't want God to say, who is that? You have a relationship with the Lord, it is a relationship with the Lord, and you know that it is very special. One day, a father and a son were walking down a mountain path that they walked often. And this particular day, there was a great big rock in the way. And this eight-year-old boy said, Dad, do you think I could move that rock out of the way? And he said, Son, I know you can. And the boy got down and he grunted and he pushed and he pushed and he pushed and he couldn't move it. And in frustration and failure, he said, Dad, I can't do it. And the father said, no, son, you can, but you haven't used all of the assets that are available to you. And he got down and he grunted and, he got, and again, and he couldn't move the rock. And he said, Dad, I failed. He said, no, you haven't, son. You haven't used all of the assets available to you. You haven't asked me to help you move the rock. How many of us are trying to move the rock ourselves and not asking the Father to help us move the rock out of the path of life? Life can be difficult, but if you reach inside yourself and you bring in your friends and family, and you have God as the center part of your team, life will become victorious, both now and forever. Amen. As you know, we always offer an invitation at the end of each service. For there might be someone in this room or watching us that has never accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and their Savior, and we want to make this your personal invitation. Or there may be someone who wants to be in fellowship with this congregation, and that's your invitation as well. Our hymn of invitation this morning is number 424, I Must Tell Jesus. If you're able, will you join me? Yeah.
Father God, how grateful we are for this Lord's Day morning. How thankful we are to be able to come together and to share in this time with you. We know, Father, that we still have loved ones who have not felt comfortable in coming back into your house. And we understand that, but we miss them. And Father, we have some who are very special, who are suffering, and I, I pray that you would look upon their lives. Certainly the Poe family and the King family and the Essex family. Just, just as a few, Father. They represent the many that you need to, to love and to nourish. Oh, how we miss Eva Jean and so many others. Just look into your heart, Father. Find the strength and the comfort for their lives. Enable them to always feel a part of this family. And we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Will you join us in our circle?